aerobic state for quite a long time. Um, and obviously we all know he has very exceptional handling skills and that is related also to his core strength and his that what Timmy talked about, how it's kind of stabilizes him from the center out. Um, maybe what we could say is some of his weaknesses are things that we could probably help, you know, try to improve with that is maybe just that constant threshold power and his relative weight as a cyclist, his watts per kilo. That's a number you're going to hear a lot of is watts per kilo. You hear it, you know, when they talk about Lance or Contador, these guys flying on the tour. That's how you compare cyclist to cyclist. You know, if you have someone who produces five watts per kilo and you have someone who produces four watts per kilo, the guy producing five watts per kilo is going to go up the hill faster. It doesn't matter what size or shape they are. Ryan's strength, uh, besides breaking your legs and cross weights, uh, he uh, has an exceptional absolute LT power. So he can reach a very high power and hold it. Um, and the, and the exceptional standardized LT power is basically that watts per kilo. So we've looked at Ryan's frame. He's, he's really tall, but his weight is relatively light for being as big as he is. And he produces a tremendous amount of power at threshold and at max power. So that makes his watts per kilo great. And one of the things that we can explain later on is maybe why he can do that. It's not necessarily, obviously we've talked about a little bit about his core. It's not necessarily coming from there, but it's coming from some, I would say, um, kinetic factors or morphological factors that he has that are pretty different. Um, Ryan's weaknesses, uh, maybe uh, anaerobic capacity, like basically he can produce a maximum load, but maybe not hold it quite as long, and just that lactate clearance. So able to produce a lot, but how fast can he clear it and then get back to maintaining it? Threshold power to be 380 watts, and his balance point power to be 
three out of ten, which puts him at his lactate threshold uh, loss per kilo at 4.6, and his balance point LT power is about 81%. So we're looking at the percentage of watts he can do before he starts to create lactate again, so he, where he can recover at. So he can do 81% of basically this 380 that we determined. And like I said, we used four millimoles. His, you know, if we were looking at this really closely and want to do another test, he may be a little bit higher, but we just wanted to cap kind of one number that we could compare absolutely to each other. We look at Adam's stats. Abs test is, we, we started, we've done a lot of tests, like I said, on Adam before, so we started him, I would say, a little quicker, so we didn't have this long lead out, okay? Um, Adam's absolute power here, like we looked at Ryan's, it was considerably higher. We look at the, the 450 versus 375, okay? But a couple of things here is Adam's, when he comes down to his balance point, we can see that he's still at like 275, even maybe 290, okay? And um, his watts at threshold power, we said, were 275. So what happens is here, his balance point power ratio is 87%. So even though his maximal power output there isn't as high, when he comes back down to recovery, he's still high, holding for percentage-wise a little bit higher wattage. So that kind of allows him to basically recover and do another anaerobic effort a little quicker. Cover at a higher level, a higher level exactly. Um, so the second part of the test, we had, um, like I said, Adam ride to exhaustion. He did uh, at 120 percent of that number that we just looked at, that 275. He did uh, 345, and then we had him do that same. Well, actually, we did 100 percent of 375, so we had him do 375, one minute on, 30 seconds off, and he completed eight efforts and may have had a couple more in the tank. He's racing in a few days. We actually did that this morning, okay? So, <laughs> um, Ryan came in. We actually had him do the same 120% of, of his test watts, which was 450 watts, so pretty high. And he did 222. We might have been able to eat a little bit more out of him there. He was actually, we did that last week before his race, so we didn't want to fry him completely. Um, but... That said, he did seven of the efforts and probably could have got a couple more out of them. But this was kind of what we wanted to see was, was maybe this time difference here and maybe the amount of efforts they could continually keep doing. So a very hard interval set. Conclusion? They're both gladiators, I guess. <laughs> um, well, conclusion is we're going to move on to Timmy. But I think right now, you know, just from a physiological point of view, I mean, they're obviously – there's some very small percentage differences between the two. Um, like I said, I think later on, I'm going to talk a little bit about maybe why Ryan can produce maximal power, maybe better than Adam can. Um, I think Adam, obviously, when you look at some of the races that he does really well,